All right. Hi, everybody. My name is Miss Katie, and I am from the Newburytown Library in Newbury, Massachusetts, United States. And I'd like to introduce you to Miss Shenoa, right? Yep. <laughs> Who is in uh, Newbury, England. And today is our first international story time. And personally, I, I was saying earlier that I had a hard time sleeping last night because I'm really excited about today. And as more folks come in, we will let them into our story time in hopes that they will be able to um, join us and enjoy. And before we, um, before we actually, no, before we read the first book, I'll show you a map of where we are compared to Newbury, England. All right. So if you guys want to go ahead and sing with me, even though you're muted and your pictures are off, and please don't laugh at my bad singing, okay? Because that would be rude to put on the video. All right. The, our first song is The More We Get Together. The more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be. Because your friends are my friends and my friends are your friends. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. And this is one of my favorite songs. We got to shake, shake, shake our sillies out. Shake, shake, shake our sillies out. Shake, shake, shake our sillies out and wiggle our waggles away. We got to clap. Clap, clap our crazies out. Clap, clap, clap our crazies out. Clap, clap, clap our crazies out and wiggle our waggles away. I gotta jump, jump, jump my jiggles out. Jump, jump, jump my jiggles out. Jump, jump, jump my jiggles out and wiggle my waggles away. I gotta yawn, yawn, yawn my sleepies out. Yawn, yawn, yawn my sleepies out. Yawn, yawn. Yawn my sleepies out and wiggle my waggles away. I gotta shake, shake, shake my sillies out. Shake, shake, shake my sillies out. Shake, shake, shake my sillies out and wiggle my waggles away. And wiggle my waggles away. Hey! All right. Well, that leads us to our first story. But first, we push all my right buttons here. And I want to share my screen with this picture. If you guys are able to push yourselves over to the side, you can see that Massachusetts is on the left hand side. You see the big, the really big blue right in front of you. On the left is New, approximately where Newbury, Massachusetts is. And on the right is approximately where Newbury, England is. It says United Kingdom, but between you and me, the United Kingdom and England, same place. All right. I think the United Kingdom is bigger because I think it owns like Ireland and Scotland and some other places. But England, there you go. Okay. All right. So that's, that's approximately where we are. So you can get an idea of how far away it is. And it's 11 o'clock in the morning, Eastern time in Massachusetts. And it's four o'clock in the afternoon in London right now crazy. I know. All right. Now let's go to our first book. Our first book today is called Library Lion. And I really like this book. Assuming I can get all my pics. There we go. Nice big. And so this is what happens when you let me do all the slides and whatnots. Okay. The book is called Library Lion by Michelle. It can either be Knudsen or Knudsen, depending on where you're from and how you want to pronounce it. One day, a lion came into the library. He walked right past the circulation desk and up to the stacks. The stacks are where we keep all of our books. It's called, it's a fancy word for bookshelves. Mr. Bean ran down the hall to the head librarian's office. Miss Merriweather, he called. No running, said Miss Merriweather without looking up. But there's a lion, said Mr. McBee, in the library. Is he breaking any rules? Asked Miss Merriweather. She was very particular about rule breaking. Well, no, said Mr. McBee. Mr. McBee, not really. Then leave him be. The lion wandered all around the library. He sniffed the card catalog. He rubbed his head against the new book collection. 
Then he padded over to the story corner and went to sleep. No one was sure what to do. There weren't any rules about lions in the library. Soon it was time for story hour. There weren't any rules about lions at story hour either. The story lady seemed very nervous, but she read out the first book's title in a good, clear voice. The lion looked up. The story lady kept reading. The lion stayed for the next story and the story after that. He waited for another story, but the children began to walk away. Story hour is over, a little girl told him. It's time to go. The lion looked at the children. He looked at the story lady. He looked at the closed books. Then he roared very loud. Uh oh, looks like Mrs. Merriweather's upset. Miss Merriweather came striding out of her office. Who is making that noise? She demanded. It's the lion, said Mr. McBee. Miss Merriweather marched over to the lion. If you cannot be quiet, you will have to leave, she said in a stern voice. Those are the rules. The lion kept roaring. He sounded sad. A little girl tugged on Miss Merriweather's dress. If he promises to be quiet, can he come back for story hour tomorrow? She asked. The, li the lion stopped roaring. He looked at Miss Merriweather. Miss Merriweather looked back. And then she said, yes, a nice quiet lion would certainly be allowed to come back for story hour tomorrow. Hooray, said the children. The next day, the lion came back. You are early, said Miss Merriweather. Story hour is not until three o'clock. The lion did not budge. Very well, said Miss Merriweather. You might as well make yourself useful. She sent him off to dust the encyclopedias until it was time for story hour. The next day, the lion came early again. This time, Miss Merriweather asked him to lick all the envelopes for overdue notices. Soon, the lion began doing things without being asked. He dusted the encyclopedias, he licked the envelopes, he let small children stand on his back to reach books on the highest shelves. Then he curled up in the story corner and went and to wait for story hour to begin. At first, the people in the library were nervous about the lion, but soon they got used to having him around. In fact, he seemed very well suited for the library. His big feet were quiet on the library floor. He made a comfy backrest for the children at story hour, and he never roared in the library anymore. What a helpful lion, people said. They patted his soft head as he walked by. How did we ever get along without him? Mr. McBee scowled when he heard that. They have always gotten along fine before. No lions were needed. Lions, he thought, could not understand rules. They did not belong in the library. One day, after he had dusted all the encyclopedias and licked all the envelopes and helped all the small children, the lion padded down the hall to Miss Merriweather's office to see what else there was to do. There was still some time left before story hour. Hello, lion, said Miss Merriweather. I know something you can do. You can bring a book back into the stacks for me. Let me just get it down from the shelf. Miss Merriweather stepped onto a, the step stool. The book was just out of reach. Miss Merriweather stood on her toes. She stretched out her fingers. Almost there, she said. Then Miss Merriweather stretched a little too far. Ouch, said Miss Merriweather softly. She did not get up. Mr. McBee, she called after a minute. Mr. McBee. But Mr. McBee was at the circulation desk. He could not hear her calling. Lion, said Miss Merriweather, please go and get Mr. McBee. The lion ran down the hall. No running, Miss Merriweather called after him. He put his big front paws up on the circulation desk and looked at Mr. McBee. Go away, lion, said Mr. McBee. I'm busy. The lion whined. He pointed his no nose down the hall towards Miss Merriweather's office. Mr. McBee ignored him. Finally, the lion did the only thing he could think of to do. He looked Mr. B right in the eye. Then he opened his mouth very wide. 
and he roared the loudest roar he had ever roared in his life. Roar! Mr. McBee gasped. You are not being quiet, he said to the lion. You're breaking the rules. Mr. McBee walked down the hall as fast as he could. The lion did not follow. He had broken the rules. He knew what that meant. He hung his head and walked towards the door. Mr. McBee did not notice. Miss Merriweather, he called as he walked. Miss Merriweather, the lion broke the rules. The lion broke the rules. He burst into Miss Merriweather's office. She was not in her chair, in her chair. Miss Merriweather, he asked. Sometimes, said Miss Merriweather from the floor behind her desk, there is a good reason to break the rules, even in the library. Now, please go call a doctor. I think I've broken my arm. Mr. McBee ran to call a doctor. No running, Miss Merriweather called after him. The next day, things were back to normal, almost. Miss Merriweather's left arm was in a cast. The doctor told her not to work too hard. I will have my lion to help me, Miss Merriweather thought, but the lion did not come to the library that morning. At three o'clock, Miss Merriweather walked over to the story corner. The story lady was just beginning a story for the children. The lion was not there. People in the library kept looking up from their books and computer screens, hoping they would see a familiar furry face. But the lion didn't come that day. The lion did not come the next day either, or the day after that. One evening, Mr. McBee stopped by Miss Merriweather's office on his way out. Can I do anything for you before I go, Miss Merriweather? He asked her. No, thank you, said Miss Merriweather. She was looking out the window, her voice very quiet, even for the library. Mr. McBee frowned as he walked away. He thought there was probably something he could do for Miss Merriweather after all. Mr. McBee left the library, but he did not go home. He walked around the neighborhood. He looked under cars. He looked behind bushes. He looked in the backyards and trash cans and tree houses. Finally, he circled all the way back to the library. The lion was sitting outside, looking in through the glass doors. Hello, lion, said Mr. McBee. The lion did not turn around. I thought you might like to know, said Mr. McBee, that there's a new rule at the library. No roaring allowed unless you have a very good reason. Say, if you're trying to help a friend who's been hurt, for example. The lion's ears twitched. He turned around, but Mr. McBee was already walking away. The next day, Mr. McBee walked down the hall to Miss Merriweather's office. What is it, Mr. McBee? asked Miss Merriweather in her new, sad, quiet voice. I thought you might like to know, said Mr. McBee, that there's a lion in the library. Miss Merriweather jumped up from her chair and ran down the hall. Mr. McBee smiled. No running, he called after her. Miss Merriweather didn't listen. Sometimes there was a good reason to break the rules, even in the library. I like that one. It's always my favorite. All right, so now we've got more songs. Okay. This one's I'm a little teapot. I'm a little teapot, short and stout. Here is my handle, here is my spout. When I get all steamed up, I just shout, tip me over and pour me out. I'm a very special pot, it's true. Here's an example of what I can do. I can turn my handle into a spout, just tip me over and pour me out. I'm a little teapot, short and stout. Here is my handle, here is my spout. When I get all steamed up, I just shout, tip me over and pour me out. All right, the wheels on the bus. The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels on the bus go round and round all through the town. The horn on the bus goes toot, 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 toot. The horn on the bus goes toot, 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 all through the town.
the money in the box goes ching, 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 ching. The money in the box goes ching, 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 all through the town. The doors on the bus go open and shut, open and shut, open and shut. The doors on the bus go open and shut, all through the town. The people on the bus go up and down, up and down up and down the people on the bus go up and down all through the town the wipers on the bus go swish 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 the wipers on the bus go swish 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 all through the town all right our last song and then the next book the itsy bitsy spider crawled up the water spout down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the itsy bitsy spider crawled up the spout again. How about the great big spider? The great big spider crawled up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain and the great big spider crawled up the spout again. And how about a teeny tiny little spider? The teeny tiny spider crawled up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed that spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain and the teeny tiny spider crawled up the spout again. <laughs> All right. It doesn't take much to tickle me. Okay. Slideshow. Play from the start. Go. Oh, wait. See, now I'm getting ahead of myself. Share screen. Where'd it go? Library books are not for eating. Share screen. Nice and big. And from the beginning. All right, it's all you. Thank you. Yeah, so I'm going to be reading our second story, which is Library Books Are Not For Eating by Todd Tartley. And I love this story. It's really, really fun. <laughs> the day Miss Bronte came to school, story time was extra cool. She told great jokes, was never mean, biggest smile you'd ever seen. One small problem, couldn't beat it once she read a book. She'd eat it. Went too she'd, oh, sorry. she'd say the end, you'd hear a crunch, then three or four more books by lunch. Miss Bronte, kids would keep repeating, library books are not for eating. Miss Bronte promised with a roar that she'd be eating books no more. But soon as story time was done, oops, there'd go another one. Miss McSmartly called her in. Miss Bronte, where do I begin? You're eating books, that isn't right. You need to curb your appetite. I think you know where this is leading. Library books are not for eating. Miss Bronte promised with a roar that she'd be eating books no more. When Miss McSmartly turned her head, she ate up all her books instead. At lunchtime, when she ate two more, the lunchroom lady stomped the floor. Miss Bronte, you must change your diet. Books taste yucky, don't deny it. Instead of books, try something new. My cottage cheese and meatball stew. We've got to rearrange your feeding. Library books are not for eating. Miss Bronte promised with a roar that she'd be eating books no more. She took one bite of cottage cheese, then ate three books of recipes. She took a walk to clear her head. Down to the soccer field, she fled. Coach Burley blew his whistle loudly, pointing to his players proudly. I've got problems of my own, a soccer field that's overgrown. Can't mow the grass, can't pick the weeds. You're not the only one with needs. Be a winner, no more cheating. Library books are not for eating. 
Miss Bronte promised with a roar that she'd be eating books no more. But as Coach Burley turned his gaze, she ate his book of soccer plays. Miss Bronte packed her bags that day. I'm sorry, but I cannot stay. It's not that I find books so yummy, but nothing else here fills my tummy. If I could find a bulb or seed, a blade of grass, a bush, a weed. Suddenly, her plan was clear. She'd make the wild weeds disappear. All she had to do was eat them, let her appetite defeat them. Now Miss Bronte just eats weeds. They fill her dietary needs. The soccer team has gone unbeaten. Not a single book she's eaten. Every morning, right at nine, Miss Bronte leads the story time. And every afternoon at four, she's on the sidelines keeping score. The soccer field is good as new. Kids run and kick where weeds once grew. The moral of this tale you're reading is library books are not for eating. A happy tale this might have been, but they hired Mr. Finn. Oh dear. <laughs> I like that book. Yeah, such good fun, that story. It is. All right, we've got three more songs. Five little ducks went out one day over the hills and far away. Mama duck said, quack, 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 quack. Four little ducks came waddling back. Four little ducks went out one day over the hills and far away. Mama duck said, quack, 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 quack. Three little ducks came waddling back. Three little ducks went out one day over the hills and far away. Mama duck said, quack, 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 quack. Two little ducks came waddling back. Two little ducks went out one day over the hills and far away. Mama duck said, quack, 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 quack. One little duck came waddling back. One little duck went out one day over the hills and far away. Mama duck said, quack, 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 quack. No little ducks came waddling back. <coughs> Excuse me. Mama duck went out one day over the hills and far away. Mama duck said, quack, 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 quack. Five little ducks came waddling back. <laughs> All right, this song is called Open, Shut Them. Open, shut them. Open, shut them. Give a little clap, clap, clap. Open, shut them, open, shut them. Put them in your lap, clap, clap. Creep them, crawl them, creep them, crawl them. Right up to your chin, chin, chin. Open wide your little mouth, but I do not let them in. Loud and quiet. Loud and quiet, louder, louder. Shh. Loud and quiet, loud and quiet, loud. Shh. Open, shut them, open, shut them. Give a little clap, clap, clap. Open, shut them, open, shut them. Put them in your lap, lap, lap. Creep them crawl them creep them crawl them right up to your nose 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 creep them crawl them creep them crawl them right down to your toes 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 shake them shake them roll them roll them put them into little fists shake them shake them roll 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 and then you blow a kiss 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 and our last song, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, and your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're clappy, happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, and your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. 
If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray! If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray! If you're happy and you know it, and your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray! If you're happy and you know it, do all three, clap your hands, stomp your feet, hooray! If you're happy and you know it, do all three, clap your hands, stomp your feet, hooray! If you're happy and you know it, and your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, do all three, clap your hands, stomp your feet, hooray! And guess what? That's it. That's the end. So I'm going to turn the recording off now so that we can turn on our videos.